Okay, welcome back to Midnight Tutor. And I have a problem here which I can virtually guarantee will be on the AP exam, the AB AP exam. Now, it won't look exactly like this, but it'll be something very close to this. And the same kind of thought process that I'm going to be using to solve this problem, you will need to have in order to solve that problem on the free response part of the test. Okay, it's a problem that has to do with velocity, acceleration, and distance. And we're given here the problem statement. Velocity is a function of time. Velocity is in meters per second. Time is in seconds. And what we're given is this graph, which shows this kind of interesting profile of how velocity varies. And then we're asked to find a bunch of different things, accelerations at certain times, distances, etc. And so we'll go through these one by one. The important thing to remember is that beyond the basics, of course, velocity is the first derivative of distance, and acceleration is the first derivative of velocity, which makes it the second derivative of distance, and then you go the other direction if you want to integrate to get from one to the other. Beyond that, you have to remember things from the context of when you're actually driving a car. So think of it, for example, from the point of view of what, what gear is the car going to be in? Are you in reverse? Are you in drive? Are you in park? And then what, what is the speedometer showing? So for example, let's go through this. We start at time zero at v equals zero. That makes sense because we're stopped, right? The car is, is starting out. And then we, the velocity increases. Remember, anytime velocity is above the axis, you're going forward, right? You have a positive velocity. You're going forward. Anytime velocity is below the axis, you're backing up. The car is in reverse. You have a negative velocity. That says nothing about the magnitude of it, but just don't be, don't, don't see something like this and say, uh oh, we're backing up, because we're not. We're still going forward, just at a slower and slower speed. So we accelerate, right? We have a velocity that has a positive slope. Then we flatten out. What does this mean? It means we're still going forward, we just haven't increased our speed. The speedometer is fixed at whatever that number is 10 meters per second. Kind of an interesting speedometer that shows meters per second. Then we go around this semicircular path here, which is kind of bizarre. Then we start to decelerate some more, and we continue to decelerate to the extent that we're now backing up. So at this moment here, we had to shift from drive into reverse, because we're now backing up. And then at this point, we're still backing up, just at a slower rate. And then here we shift again from reverse back into drive, and now we're going forward. So think of it in terms of these tangible, everyday principles, and it will make your life easier, in, in my opinion. So now let's try to analyze the questions. The, the first one, I'm going to change the, uh, the value here and say, find A at 10 seconds, which is right here. So we don't have an equation to take a derivative of. Now we could potentially try to write this as an equation, fit the equation to the line, and then take a derivative. That would be the extremely long way to do the answer. Because we know that the acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time, which is the same as saying anytime you have derivative, you always should think slope. So it's the same as the slope. But here we have a line which has a constant slope. Right? And we just have to figure out what that is. Well, we've gone up 10 over the course of 15. So there's going to be 10 over 15, which is 0 0.67 meters per second squared, right? Because we have meters per second, 10 meters per second, divided by 15 seconds. So we get meters per second squared, which is a valid unit for acceleration. It's just the slope. No algebra required. How nice is that? Then we have A at 30. Well, interestingly enough, look what happens here at time 30. Now, this profile is easy to write on an AP calculus exam it would be impossible, truly impossible, to drive it exactly as it's shown. You would have to do something here. You'd have to have a little curve here. Because the way it's shown here, there's a corner. At one moment, we're going 
10 miles an hour and then instantaneously the acceleration increases, it kicks out. Could you actually drive that? I, I don't think so. So the question is then, what is the acceleration at t equals 30? Well, does it have a slope? Not necessarily, because we have a slope on one side like this and a slope on the other side like this. So you'd have to say that the acceleration at t equals 30 is undefined. Now we still have a velocity, right? We're still going forward. This is just an idealized profile which you could not drive. Then we have A at 40. Here's 40, right in the center of this semicircular velocity profile. And we, have, we want the slope there. What's the slope at the top? It's a horizontal line which has a slope of zero. So what does that mean? That means that at this moment we are not accelerating. Our acceleration is zero. We have our foot on the gas. We're still going forward. The speedometer is still showing some speed. The car is still in drive. But we're not flooring it to go faster. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense for acceleration. Now let's go into part two, which is distance. Change to a different color. So S at 30. Well, here's 30 seconds. And so how do we get from velocity to distance? We have to integrate, right? Distance is the integral of velocity, dt. And so the integral, in this case, is going to be, at S, it's going to be the integral from 0 to 30 of velocity. And that's the same as saying the area under the curve, right? Plus, remember, we have to have an initial velocity. This only tells us an initial distance, I'm sorry. This only tells us the speed that we're going. It doesn't tell us where we started on the road or on the map relative to the point we designed as zero. But here we're given another piece of information. S of zero is 40, so that covers our initial. So we have an area under the curve plus the initial distance. This thing. If you did not have this, you would not be able to answer this question. You'd only be able to say, what's the change in distance from 0 to 30? You wouldn't be able to say, what's the actual position at 30? And so when we do this area, well, we find we have a triangular piece and a rectangular piece. So the, the triangular piece is going to be 1 half times the base, which is 15. And this is meters per second, seconds times the height, which is 10 meters per second. The seconds cancel. We're left with meters, and we get 1 half times 15 times 10. That's the same as 15 times 5, which is 55. So that's this little piece here. Now we need the rectangle. We've got 15 times 10, so we have plus 115 times 10, which is 150. So the total then is going to be 55 plus 150 plus 40. 245 meters. So that's S at 30. Now let's look at S at 75. Well, we can use what we've already done for 30 in order to get out to 75 because it's cumulative. So I'm just going to erase this for the sake of space and then we'll continue at 30. So what we have to do now is to find S at 75, we have to integrate all this other area under the curve. We've got some negative area too, which is going to cause our distance value to be less, right? And that makes sense. When we're backing up, we're in reverse, then we're losing forward distance at that time. So we could, we could try to figure out this circle here. And 
write an equation for it, and then try to integrate that. If you try that, you will never finish the test. You will never pass go. You will never collect $200. The thing you want to do in this case is just continue to use these geometric shapes and calculate the integral as the area, which is pretty easy. So what's the area of this piece here? Well, it's a rectangle and half a circle. So that's going to be the rectangle is 20 times 10. And then we also have the circle. So we have 1 half pi. And what's the radius? Is 10 squared. And that's going to give us 200 plus 50 pi meters, right? So that's that piece. Then we have this little triangle here from 50 to 60 is 10. So we have, then we have plus 1 half times 10 times 10, which is 50. So that's that piece. Then we have this triangle. We have 60 to 75, which is 15, and we're down to 20, plus 1 half times 15 times 20. Oops, that should be a minus, right? Because it's a negative value, we're going to lose area there. So that's going to be minus. So 10 times 15 is 150. And then we have from 75 to 80, this is a 20, so we have then also minus 1 half times 10 times 20, which is going to be minus 100 meters. And then this last piece from 80 to 90 is 10, and we're up to 10. So then we have plus 1 half times 10 times 10, which is 50. So the net result then is going to be 245, which is our point at 30, plus 200, so 445 plus 50 pi. Let's try to keep track of this. So we have 200, 245, 200, 50, plus 50. Then we have minus 100, minus 150. And then we have plus 50 pi, which we'll just leave it the way it is. So what's this total here? Two, four, four, 445, 545, minus 100 is 445, minus 150 would be 345 minus 50, 295. Is that right? Let's look at this for a second. 445, 545, 445, minus 10 would be 345, 545, 445, minus 100 would be 345, minus 50 would be 295 meters, right. So that's our answer for S of 75. Okay, hopefully this is making sense. Think of it always in terms of, are you going forward or back? And then if you get a graph like this, use area. Don't try to figure out equations and then apply algebra or calculus to the equations. Okay, now we're on to point, part three. What's the maximum forward distance traveled? Well, where, where can we expect the maximum distance traveled to be located? Let's, let's think about this. So we're going forward. We're in drive this whole time. And then at this moment here, 60 seconds, we shifted the car from drive into reverse. Now, in reality, we could not follow this profile. The engine, the transmission would self-destruct, and we would leave it laying on the road. If we Because if when you're driving, you automatically all of a sudden shift into reverse, you're going to hear a nasty metal grinding sound. So in reality, this profile would have to go more like this, right? But this is an idealized mathematical example. We'll just use it as is. So this whole time we're in drive until we get to 60 when we shift it into reverse, because now we're going backwards. So now look at the, the magnitude of this triangular piece here relative to this little piece here. Do you think that when we shift back into drive, we're going we're gonna to make up for all this time we spent driving in reverse. I doubt it. So this point here is going to be the point at which we have maximum distance. And so what is that? Well, we, had, we decided that uh, up to this point, now I'm forgetting the number. Let's just do it over. What, what the heck? So we have 1 half times 
10 times 15, and we have 15 times 10, and we have 20 times 10, and we have 1 half pi times 10 squared, and then we have 10, 1 half times 10 times 10. So this is 55, 150, 200, 50 pi, we decided, right? And this is 50. So when we add this all up, we get 5, let's put the 50 pi over here, 5, 5 and 5 is 10, 5 is 15, 1, 2, 4, So that's our answer, 455 plus 55 meters. That's our maximum forward distance traveled, and that occurred at 60. So now the next question, number four, I think I've already answered. Is the vehicle ever backing up? Well, yeah, sure. Anytime that the velocity is south, is south of the axis, we're going backwards, right? We're, the velocity is negative, we're backing up. We're in reverse. So during this whole time here, we're in reverse. So the answer is yes. And then the last one, the maximum speed. Well, this is a graph of velocity, which is analogous to speed. So maximum speed is going to be wherever this number is the greatest, right? And we can see that that happens here, and it's 20. So the maximum speed is going to be 20 meters per second. Okay, so this is a simple problem. I virtually guarantee there'll be something very close to this on the AP exam where you're gonna to have to interpret these distances, velocities, and accelerations, and then make some conclusions and answer the questions. Whenever possible, try to do the integral as a, a area calculation before you resort to fitting a curve and then integrating that algebraic expression. One other thing I'm gonna ask, since we have this slope still here and this, this graph still here, at time t equals zero, what's the acceleration at zero? Even at zero, we're not moving, right, because the velocity is zero. We're standing still. But do we still have an acceleration? Is acceleration zero? No, acceleration is the slope of this line, which retains that slope all the way to the point zero. So even though we're not actually moving at that instant, we do have an acceleration. It's like we hit the, we floored the gas pedal, and we're waiting for the car to respond. Okay, check out all of our tutorials at MidnightTutor.com, and please send us your problems which will make this much more relevant to you.